Hello everybody. Today's video, um, instead of being about a uh, film camera, which it usually is, uh, today's uh, video is going to be about um, a photographer called Jane Bowne. It's a photographer that I've always really enjoyed the photos that she takes and I've collected um, four of her books now and so I thought it was about time, and I've been kind of meaning to do this for a while, that I did a video about her and shared some of her photography and a bit of history about her because if you've, you might not have heard of her and um, she's just certainly somebody that I think you should know about if you don't already. Okay, so a bit of a history here. So Jane Baum was uh, born in 1925 and uh, I'll put some pictures up now as I'm talking about her or of her, but she, um, she was born in 1925 and she died in 2014, but at the grand old age of 89. She was an English photographer and she worked for, um, have had a very long career. I worked for the Observer newspaper in England. Uh, when she was about 24 years old, um, she started working for them. And she worked for them for decades. Her speciality was um, black and white portrait photography, uh, using available light. You know, um, didn't use lots of strobes and flashes and complicated things. Just dialed in the settings. Uh, manually on the camera and used available light and she was kind of the master of that really uh, so yeah so she studied photography at, uh, at Guildford School of Arts uh, had a career as a wedding photographer initially and then I think it was around 49 between 49 and 51 she started working at the Observer magazine and worked there until she retired uh, in the 1960s Bound used a Rolia Flex uh, which is pictured here uh, which I'm I've got a Rolia Flex myself which isn't too different to this one. This is just, but my one's a my one's a later model uh, to hers. But uh, mine is the same as hers in that there's there's no light meter. This uh, you just have to uh, kind of use Sunny 16 or know your light, dial in the settings, the aperture, shutter speed, and the ISO, and take your pictures. And she used this one here for a long time. Um, so yes, yeah, so until the 1960s, uh, Jane Bowne used the Roliflex, uh, which is pictured there. She then tried a Pentax SLR. For those that are kind of into cameras and stuff, that's, she sort of switched to Pentax. I'm not exactly sure which model, but finally she decided on the Olympus OM-1. The Olympus OM-1 is a bit of a classic, really. A very small film SLR, 35mm SLR. She tended to use that with a 85mm lens. She just basically used that for decades, you know, 30, 40 years she used that. She uh, liked an all manual camera, you know, it's no aperture priority or anything like that. Uh, and so she would just, she just used that. She didn't go up to the OM2 or anything like that as far as I'm aware, just stuck with the OM1. And all the photos I've been able to find of her, she's using that trusty OM1. Apparently she had like sort of 12 of them <laughs> uh, over the years and just kind of worked her way through them until they wore out. and just kept buying uh, used OM1s. So she photographed all the famous people of the time and sort of great and the good uh, uh, people. Orson Welles, John Lennon, uh, Henry Carter Bresson, uh, Queen Elizabeth and, and uh, Bjork and many, many more. Uh, but she also did photojournalism and photojournalism is what's covered in, hang on, let me move things around a bit. So, the sort of photojournalism side of what she did is covered in this book, Unknown Bound. This is my favourite book. Uh, it covers uh, the, uh, the Greenham Common, Peace Camp evictions, uh, British seasides, Butlins holidays, which is like a British um, English holiday resort, Glastonbury Festival, Hot Pickers working. Um, absolutely fantastic book, full of great pictures of people at work and on holiday in sort of quintessential Britain. And she's had a real eye for, for contrast and light and, and you can see in this picture here, sort of textures. Um, 
There we go, so some lovely pictures. And then you might recognise some of these photos and uh, and not realise that they were by her. But this these, these are kind of, it's called Unknown, Unknown Bound because what she was famous for was uh, the celebrity portraits, uh, which I'll show you in this book. So there's some... Famous faces in here. You should have photographed everybody at that time. Peter O'Toole. Right, let's see, there's a few at the back. But, um, yeah, sorry, anyway. So she was famous for photographing sort of great and the good, the famous uh, portraits of people and capturing the kind of essence of them and using natural light. My favorite book is this Unknown Bound book, which is the photojournalism side. Um, I just think that, I mean, she wasn't sort of going there to take a portrait of a famous person when she was a bit more free to just use her Rolia Flex, you see the all square format. She would capture, I think, kind of more interesting pictures, really. And we don't all have the luxury of being able to go and have appointments to take photos of celebrities. But what we can do is, is what she did here, which is capture life, you know, around you. Uh, OK, yeah, so she, as I said, she did the photojournalism side as well. And oh, that's, that's my favourite side of her work. Uh, so I'd highly recommend getting Unknown Bound, the 47 to 67 uh, photos that she took with her Rolia Flex. Uh, but for the portraits, she used the Olympus OM-1. Uh, and as I say, I think it was an 85 millimeter lens that she predominantly used for her portraits. Uh, so yeah, so when, when she kind of died, Lord Snowden, paying tribute to her, said that um, it described as a kind of English Cartier-Bresson and said she didn't rely on tricks or gimmicks. She just had a simple, honest... Uh, way of recording people um, but she had a kind of shrewd and intelligent eye and I thought that was a kind of nice thing to say about her um, and there's a fantastic documentary called Looking for Light which is all about her and there's, uh, there's, there's interviews with her before she died where she talks about photography and she's very honest and just sort of says you know a lot of the time she would just set the camera to a 60th of a second set the lens to f2.8 she knew that that would expose correctly under kind of natural light window light put your subject indoors by a window and there's nice soft light coming through that's going to expose your photo correctly and i use those settings all the time having sort of found out that that was her kind of go-to setup i've tried that with my children and you know it works really well and it teaches you to kind of look at look at the light and recognize oh okay that's that's strong enough light for f2.8 or 60th of a second or if it's a bit darker put it on f2 or f1.8 but she just had this innate ability to capture people and get them sort of disarm them uh, she just come she turn up and she was almost like a little old lady and quite small and and she sort of said there's nothing of me now she was tiny she turned up with this wicker basket with her earlier flex in or her om her olympus om1 and she'd take pictures of people and it wasn't what they were used to they were used to kind of maybe a big burly photographer from a newspaper turning up but this this lady from from the countryside would turn up and she would uh, get talking to them and get these lovely portraits of people so she's definitely a photographer i would highly recommend you have a look at um she's taken lots of great rolia flex square format medium format pictures uh in this book and there's loads of uh, if you're more into celebrity portraits than this book and then this larger book is uh, uh sort of um, a far more thorough sort of mixture of everything So it's got the portraits, but it's also got when she was sort of out taking pictures of city life and country life. And this is a fantastic book as well. And there's the occasional colour photo, but it's mostly black and white. So 
so well worth checking out. And um, kind of final thing that was quite sort of funny, I thought, was that in you know in the days of shooting film, she gets sent out. She always tended to shoot uh, Tri-X 400 black and white film. And she'd go out and she would shoot a roll of film. She'd usually uh, just do, I think it was one roll of film. Um, and then she'd, she'd come home and she'd have a few frames normally left on the end of the film because she'd do about uh, 20, 25 or so shots, something like that, most of a roll of a film. And then, and then she would, she'd head home. And she would always have to use up those last few shots before you know she could send off the, the film to be developed. Or, or get it processed and so what she would she, what she would do uh and you know we all take pictures of random things when we've just got to use the last few shots and what she would do is she would take pictures of cats if she saw a cat she would take a quick picture and so the ends of a lot of her rolls of film have a couple of pictures of cats on and that was just something that she did and so there's actually a book of um of cat photos that she took which is all over the years from when she was just using up these few shots at the end of the film and I've also got that book, which is here, um, which, is, which is probably not the, I mean, I would probably only get this if you've got all the other books and you sort of want to complete the set, maybe get then get this book. Um, but it's quite a fun book and it's not as expensive as, as some of the others. But I think that's quite kind of sweet, really, that, that she did that. And so she's sort of a little library of cat photos as well that she could look back on because she loved cats. So it'd be quite interesting to hear what you use up sometimes if you've got a couple of frames left on a film, if, if you do something like that with the dogs or cats or something like that. But anyway, she's a fantastic photographer and I've collected four of her books because I like her portraits and the photojournalism. And even some of the cat pictures are quite good. So I thought I'd do this video for you. Um, check her out and, and certainly if you get a chance watch that documentary looking for light which is about jane bound and her life and her photography if you're liking this like and share and i'll keep making more thank you